Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan, and this is one of a series of one-on-one -on -one conversations we are having with candidates for local office. Uh, today, I am talking to Julie Brazil, who is a candidate for a uh, town clerk in the elections this year, 2020. Julie, welcome, and thanks for joining us. We That's good to be here. Um, so I want to uh, just basically engage in a conversation with you that enables you to get perhaps a little bit more of, uh, of your views and perspectives than would have been available to you uh, in the constraints of the debate. Um, and also just follow up on some of the things that, uh, that came up there. Um, sure. But we're talking about, of course, the clerk's office job. And everybody's mind uh, right now is on our first, our local election coming up very imminently uh, on June 6th. And, um, and the process that we are having to develop for that. So uh, why mm -hmm. don't you just take us through that process really quickly and then let us know what you think, uh, you know, of the way that the, that the clerk's office has performed and, have, and the things they've had to deal with uh, right now. Sure. So yes, it, it's, uh, it's funny. Candidates are so uh, focused on uh, the election date and now, um, you know, I feel bad. I don't want to say June 6th because um, people have to people have to vote before June 6th if they're voting by mail. Um, so where we are now is uh, we're waiting for the postcards. The town uh, is mailing a postcard to every registered voter. I'm hoping to get mine today. Um, and uh, and that postcard will let you, uh, you know, add your name and your address and sign it and send it back and get a ballot in the mail. The postcard's prepaid, so they've, they've tried to make that as, uh, as simple for people as possible. You don't have to find a stamp. Um, so that's been, uh, you know, it was a, a great uh, decision on the part of the town. The clerk's office will then, um, you know, process all those requests, and the first wave of ballots is due to be mailed out um, on Friday, late this week. Um, they've already processed requests, you know, the absentee requests that come in, um, I mean, absentee requests came in in February when we thought <laughs> uh, the election was in April. Um, so they, the last I heard, they have about a thousand to mail out and then they'll just keep mailing them in waves. Um, and people should probably be prepared to, um, you know, kind of stick, I'm telling people to get, you know, June 1st in your head. That's when you should really put your ballot in the mail so it's safe and there's, um, you know, if your mailman's having a weird day, you're not risking, right. you got a <laughs> you're not risking your vote uh, not being counted. People should understand it's not a postmark. The physical ballot has to be um, processed on election day. And the town's been doing this for a long time. There's a long history of that late afternoon call around four to the post office. Are there any ballots, um, you know, still there? And then somebody goes over and, and gets them and takes them to the precincts. Um, so that your vote is counted. Um, so that's, it's not actually a hard process, but it's going to feel complicated for people. And that is something that I think the town is, um, is worried about as a community. Um, change is hard. People are creatures of habit. And we've been learning a lot of new habits um, through this whole, you know, self-isolation process. Um, and I just, I, I do worry about people who will find this confusing. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I understood. How do you feel, uh, do, do you have anything that you want to say about the performance of the clerk's office so far in this, you know, again, granted that these are unprecedented circumstances, we're all making it up as we go along, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any observations about the clerk's office and how it would run if you were in charge that might sure. be illustrative, um, you know, sure. for using this example? So the plan is, um, is solid. Uh, I, I'm, the clerk's office has been working closely with town manager and uh, select board staff on all of the planning. And I think um, the planning is good. I, I haven't seen the postcard. Um, and one thing that's, <laughs> that I have learned over the years, because uh, you know, working on the town survey um, that Envision Arlington does, um, it's really hard to get the wording right when space is limited. And on this postcard, there's not a lot of time to explain. And so, you know, the instructions will have to be clear. Um, and, um, and so I'm hopeful, given all of the thoughtful planning that's been happening so far, that that postcard will be um, straightforward and not too confusing for people, just because it is, 
you know, it's going to confuse people. Um, and so um, the, it, trying to make sure that the town has um, a sort of a robust communication plan, um, way to, for people who are confused by it to, to get an answer quickly um, so that they're not stressed out and that they're not, their confusion isn't slowing down their ability to participate, voter engagements. Um, the whole reason we're doing this much work as a town. Um, and uh, so that follow through is really important. Um, and I think community wide, this is a great chance to activate um, all the networks, uh, you know, Arlington Help and Mutual Aid Arlington and Amazing Arlington. There are lots and lots of volunteers. And I think we want to make sure that they all understand the questions that have been coming up so that if they're talking with people, um, you know, face to face or, you know, dealing with a shut in who needs help, that they're helping them um, navigate um, one more detail so that they can vote. You, you mentioned voter engagement, and I know mm -hmm. that, um, you know, increasing access uh, to voting and, um, you know, is an important component for you uh, mm -hmm. and the other candidates, I'm sure. Um, and we're all aware that there's generally a low, lower turnout than we would like, especially for purely local elections, et cetera. How yes. do you think this is going to affect, um, you know, that concern, access to voting? This is a huge experiment. Yes, it's always so sad for people who follow politics in Arlington closely, who feel like, you know, the voter turnout is um, is so low, um, and it and that's that's sad for people. Um, and so there's always a discussion on the Arlington list and and social media after an election. Um, you know, what can we do? And sometimes the answers are well, we should be mailing things to every registered voter. And now we're doing that, so it will be interesting to see if that in fact increases voter participation. Um, I hope it does. Um, there are a lot of contested races, and this is, um, you know, this is, <laughs> the timing is fortuitous in that um, it would be, we'd still have to do this, um, this vote by mail process because of the health crisis, um, even if there were no contested races. So at least, um, you know, we're getting the, the most bang for our buck. Um, mm -hmm. And I think more people will engage because there are so many decisions. That voters get to make right now. And assuming for a second, or maybe even for the balance of this conversation, that conditions were more normal and that we weren't just mm -hmm. you know, dealing always under the looming shadow of the pandemic. Um, assuming that is this step of mailing into everybody's home, is that something that you would do uh, as clerk to engage voters? If so, you know, why and what else? What would you do mm -hmm. as the clerk to further engage a voting population? So, yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's controlled by um, the legalities. So um, to do vote by mail um, will require um, changes at the, the state. Uh, the legislators will have to enable that. They have planned to do that. Um, uh, it hasn't been voted on, but the legislation looks um, reasonable for d continuing vote by mail for the September primary and the November general elections. And I certainly support that. Um, I will be um, on the phone um, following up hard um, uh, in my capacity as a, as a voter and a person. Um, uh, either way, um, this, is, this is really important um, to, uh, to expand voter engagement, and I hope that the numbers in Arlington uh, prove that, um, that it's worth the cost and, and the change. Um, and so, I mean, and then I think, yes, um, we have to explore that. We have to figure out um, what the clerk's office can do. Uh, the clerk does not have unilateral um, control over elections. It's a, definitely a partnership um, with the select board. Um, and so uh, there's, uh, I would want to explore all possible methods to, to reach voters um, and increase engagement um, working within the framework um, that we're given uh, by the state. Okay, you know, in the five minutes we have left in this conversation, it's flying by, of course. Um, I wanted to ask, just follow up on a few things that came up in the debate. One of them is that you were citing your experience working with as a volunteer in town over decades in organizing volunteers. You were cited that experience as a, you know, as your proxy for being qualified for this, this, you know, for some of the the work entailed by the mm -hmm. job. 
Um, is, is that an apt, truly an apt uh, analogy compared to uh, the resumes of the, of, of the other candidates, which seem to be more, you know, ha be filled with more relevant experience? I guess it depends on, um, on how you can define relevant. Um, uh, yes, Janice is currently um, supervising the, the staff in the clerk's office. Um, so she is, um, you know, acting in some sense um, in the current role. So, uh, you know, we can consider her for the purpose of the, of the conversation an incumbent. Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure that Patty has, uh, she has significant management experience. She's coordinated things, um, you know, in this, the same way that I've coordinated um, things. So I'm not sure that that's a highly relevant. Um, I'm not sure there's a, big, a really big difference between Patty and myself in terms of resumes. And some of the solutions that, um, that I think we're going to have to use in the clerk's office in order to um, continue outreach and continue engagement may involve that partnership that's developed with the clerk's office and the League of Women Voters um, and Envision Arlington in order to use volunteers to do some of the work. Um, there, there is a distinction apparently legally between the kinds of information that the town can provide to residents on town meeting candidates. Um, that's, that's a different um, kind of democracy and those are different races than, um, than elected townwide offices. So um, the, the partnership, the, the, the gathering of the information and the candidate statements and making those available to people um, has been something that the League and Envision Arlington have done. And I think that is going to have to continue until we can, um, uh, because that's really an important source of information for people. And um, town meeting candidates are uh, are always uh, <laughs> struggling to figure out how to reach voters because you it's really hard to knock on every door. Um, you know, four thousand residents in in a precinct. So, um, so yeah. So I mean, I think that that those partnerships are very important, um, and that collaborative. Um, you know, the elections, like I said before, are a collaborative process. So I think um, being, um, you know, being part of the team is really how I'm um, approaching it. This is not a unilateral role. Right. Well, speaking of that, um, wanted to uh, ask you to just give us a sense of what your own leadership and management style would be uh, within the office. And also, um, one other thing, and this, because we may not have time to get beyond this question. Mm -hmm. um, so that, your management style, and also um, how you would get more resources or money. Um, uh, Janice mm -hmm. was citing that that was an issue for her, just not having money. You know, do you have plans for that? So management style and how to get sure. access to more resources. Okay, so yes. Um, so as a volunteer leader, I've been managing volunteers for a really long time. And yes, um, so that, you know, that style of, of uh, making sure that people are supported, that they um, that they have the information and the resources they need to do their job well, um, that certainly carries through. Um, people need responsibility. Um, they need to feel like they're really contributing, um, and I think that's important um, with paid staff in the office. We'll, we, we're building a team, um, and um, and I, I'm sure that there will be. Um, well, there will be changes, um, and I'm excited to um, to use their expertise. Um, you know, they're they're doing the work now, and I'm sure they have ideas. And I really hope that they will share those ideas, and that we can build on that. Um, improvements um, should bubble up um, from the people doing the work, um, and I would certainly want to listen to their ideas about how to improve things. Um, the flow of information and, and the paperwork in the office. I would never want to create a system that made it harder um, for off the office to do its work um, just because I had a, an idea. Um, that would be foolish. You know, um, amazingly, we're <laughs> out of time. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to be able to get to the other question, but um, <laughs> appreciate the fact that uh, you absolutely filled the 15 minutes we have. Uh, with content and hopefully uh, make it easier for people to make their decisions uh, here coming up. Thank um, you so much for doing this. Again, you guys have been great. Thank you. Um, I'm James Milan. This has been a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Julie Brazil, candidate for town clerk.
Uh, we appreciate your being here. We'll see you next time.